This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. What a wonderful morning to be worshiping together as a community of faith out in God's glorious creation. So we're, we're so glad to have all of you. A special welcome to any of our visitors. We would love to get to know you more after worship, so feel free to approach Pastor Heidi or me or any of the Grace members. We're a friendly bunch here. Two, two announcements this morning. The, today's the last day that we're collecting school supplies for our um, grandparents raising grandchildren, which is part of Aging Care Connection. So if you have any school supplies you'd like to share, drop them off inside or feel free to run over to Walgreens after worship and pick something up and drop it off. And I'm also excited to announce that our church council has approved a call committee to begin the, the process to look and call our next associate pastor. They're meeting, they're having their first meeting next week. Pastor Kyle Severson, who was here last week, is going to be part of that process. So I ask that you keep the call committee and our whole church in your prayers as they seek to discern who God is calling to be our next associate pastor. And with that, I invite you all to be in a spirit of worship. The world belongs to God, the earth and all its people. Love and faith come together. Justice and peace join hands. If Christ's disciples keep silent, these stones would shout aloud. Creating God, maker of all, be with us this day. Jesus Christ, servant of the poor, be with us this day. Holy Spirit, breath of life, be with us this day. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair, deliver your sons and daughters from fear, and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, church. It's good to see you all. Good morning. A scripture reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the 14th chapter. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. I would love to invite our youngest friends to join me up here as we have a little conversation together. Kiddos, come on up, please. Don't leave me hanging. Hi. Hi. Let's see. Jacob, can you help me? Could you get this shell? Hazel, could you come and get this rubber band, please? Can you get that little rubber band? Could you hold this rock, please? Thank you. Good morning. Hi, Fiona. Good morning, everyone. I am so glad to see you all. Now, before we get started up here, I need to ask our grown-up friends out here, are there any science teachers in our space today? Okay. Yay. I'm going to ask advance, I'm going to offer advance apologies for what is going to be some very rudimentary scientific language I'm going to use up here. Okay, what do I have here, friends? Water. Water. I have a bowl of water, right? And it's what? Water. It's water, duh, Mac. So water has some incredible properties, right? Do you guys have science class in your schools? No. Yeah. Do you, you used to? Yeah. Are, do you ever learn cool things about water? Like, for example, how when you blow bubbles in water like this, do those bubbles go up or down? Yeah, they always go up, don't they? The air. With milk, they stay up. And with milk, they stay up sometimes? I didn't even know that. Okay. So, see, science teachers right here. Good job, Jacob. Hazel, could you put that rubber band here? Let's see. Is this going to float, do you think? Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Just drop. It does. Look at that. Do you know what? I thought it was going to float. You thought it was going to float too, didn't you? Yeah. This floats. Len, tell me if I'm wrong here. Rubber bands float because of something called surface tension on the top of the water. So the stuff that makes up water, all these molecules stick really closely together so that when you lay something on top of it that's light like that, it floats because all of those molecules stay together and hold it up. Now let's see, we don't have a boat, but I have this shell that we're gonna use our imaginations and pretend is a boat. Can you flip that over, Jacob? Let's see, is this gonna float? Yes. That does float, doesn't it? Now this is a lot heavier than a rubber band. Yeah. So anybody know why something Just like this floats? Don't water get in it. Yeah, because what happens if water gets in it? Then it sinks. So exactly. Water is because water is heavy, right? And when it fills up with that heavy water, it sinks. But when we just set it on top of here, some of the water, what happens is it call, it's what we say is it gets displaced. Like you put this on there and the water moves away in the same amount of weight as this shell, something like that. And so, <laughs> and so it floats up here, right? Now, I just read a story from the Bible, from Matthew's Gospel, about uh, Jesus walking on the water. Whoops. So, if all of these things can float, or if we, thanks Jacob, or if we see those bubbles rising up to the air, 
or if we watch Hazel drop a, um, a rubber band on there and it floats, how do we think Jesus maybe stayed on top of the water? Not putting water in his shoes? I mean, that would be a good scientific experience, experiment. Not water in his shoes, yeah, not letting water in his shoes. Yeah, that might make him sink if he had iron shoes on. That's for sure. I think plastic shoes. Yeah, I think it might be because Jesus is God. And who made all of creation, including science? God, right? God used science to create this incredible world that we have. And so, of course, if Jesus decides he wants to walk on the water, he can do that. Then his friend Peter, who was in a boat that was getting all tossed around in this storm on the lake, also decided, like, if Jesus can do that, maybe I should be able to do that, too. And so you don't think so, Hazel? No, No? you wouldn't want to try walking on the water? No. Me neither. That seems a little scary to me, too. If it were a storm, I wouldn't. If it were a storm, you wouldn't. Yeah, me either. Jacob would belly flop on the water. You would say it again, Mac? I tried walking in air and on a zip line. You tried walking on air on a zip line. Yeah. Work. Didn't work so well, huh? Yeah. Well, so Peter saw Jesus walking on the water and he said, Jesus, if that's really you, tell me to come on out and I'll walk on the water too. And so Jesus said, okay, come on out here. Do you think Peter was probably scared because the water was so stormy? Yeah. Yeah, I would have been too. But he nonetheless looks Jesus right in the eye and takes a step out there. And he is also able to walk on the water for at least a few minutes. Now, what do you think was holding Peter up on the water? Trust, trust, his trust in Jesus, right? He believed in Jesus, who was the creator of the universe and in Jesus' power to be able to hold him up. He trusted that Jesus would be able to do that, right? And that's kind of, I wish I could too, girl. Wouldn't that be so cool? Yeah. Well, one of the things that I want us to remember then about today's story is that uh, when Jesus invites us into things that even feel a little bit scary, like walking on a stormy sea might feel a little bit scary, that it's our trust in Jesus that lets us get through even those stormy and scary times, right? And it's our trust in Jesus that makes sure that we don't do like the rock, which goes, just plops right down there and sinks, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's our trust in Jesus that helps us get through stormy, scary times in our lives. Would you do a repeat after prayer with, repeat after me prayer with me? Okay, let's hold our hands up like this to the heavens and, cre- and the creator of the universe. Ready? Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for being trustworthy. Thank you for all of creation. And thank you for keeping us safe, even in stormy waters. Amen. Thanks, friends. Thanks for your help. Lynn, did I do okay on the science front? Fine, fine enough, passable. Thank you. Beloved of God, grace to you and peace from the one who created us and redeemed us and moves among us still. Amen. So I missed you all this past weekend. Um, I was away. I took a long planned little road trip up to Minneapolis, Minnesota to meet up with my two younger sisters because we had tickets to see the Indigo Girls in this lovely outdoor performing arts venue um, just around the corner from my middle sister's house. Indigo Girls. Yes, some of us, yes, some of us are like, yeah, raising, raising the roof a little bit about that. Others of us are like, who? So the Indigo Girls are an indie folk duo that have been playing music together since the 1980s. And like a lot of other Midwestern white ladies, they form a, a real core of well, like what I would describe as the soundtrack of my life. So you know that I love that a whole new generation of people are getting to know the Indigo Girls music thanks to the Barbie movie, of all things. There is a scene in the Barbie movie uh, where three of the main characters are on their own little road trip, and they are singing the Indigo Girls' most well-known song, Closer to Fine, at the top of their lungs as they drive through, you know, whatever Barbie land intermediate space that they're in, uh, in this movie. So now my daughter, Kate, who will be 11 in September, 
also knows the words to Closer to Fine. We jam out to it in our own car once in a while, so I love this. Anyway, this is basically what concerts with the Indigo Girls are like. It's like a big giant sing-along with four or 5,000 of your brand new best friends. The Indigo Girls often travel with their band, but this last weekend it was just the two of them with their guitars and this truly incredible violinist named Lyris Hung. And about halfway through last weekend's show, Hung played an extended violin solo that started out with her plucking just a handful of notes that she recorded and then played in a loop so that that loop became like an accompaniment for this gorgeous, majestic, improvised piece that she played with her whole body. And after several breathtaking minutes where my jaw was just like dropped, this looped accompaniment stopped and Hung's violin shifted into these clear singular notes that sing the beginning of one of my favorite Indigo Girls songs. It's called The Wood Song from their album Swamp Ophelia circa 1994. Um, and it uses the metaphor of a big old wooden boat for the journey of life and relationships that we are all on together in this great wide world. And the poeticism of the lyrics of this song moves me every single time I hear it. And so indulge me while I share just a couple of lines with you. The words to the chorus go like this, but the wood is tired and the wood is old and we'll make it fine if the weather holds. But if the weather holds, we'll have missed the point. That's where I need to go. So one of the admittedly peculiar, but also beautiful things about being a pastor is that it's literally my job to carry preaching texts around in my heart with me for a whole week before I stand up here in front of you on any given Sunday which means that it wasn't just my sisters walking into that concert venue with me last weekend. Lyris Hung played the first few notes of the wood song and suddenly Peter and Jesus were in there with me too. And so were the disciples and so was their big wooden boat getting tossed around and battered by the waves on that stormy sea. Now, if we were among the first people to hear this story from Matthew's gospel that I read just a few minutes ago, people who were deeply attuned to Jewish tradition and the narratives of the Old Testament, we would immediately recognize that there is cosmic significance in this whole thing about Jesus walking on the stormy waters. We would hear echoes from the Old Testament book of Job in Matthew's words, when Job talks about the creator traversing the oceans and trampling the waves. And we would know that Jesus has authority over the waters and authority over the whole of creation. And we would hear Jesus say, take heart, it is I, which in the original Greek actually says, take heart, I am. And we would immediately remember the story of Moses, the Old Testament hero, the great liberator of God's people who leads them out of enslavement in Egypt and into freedom. Moses is deeply interested to know God's name and God's response to Moses' question about God's name is simply, I am. My name is I am. So now hearing Jesus say, take heart, I am. We would know that this isn't just another prophet. We would know that this is God, all wrapped up in flesh and bone. And if we were among the ancient first hearers of this story, we would hear any mention of the sea whatsoever, what the translation we just read calls a lake. And we would know that we're really talking about a living, chaotic, and potentially deadly spirit, which is what seas were believed to be in that time. And so when they see Jesus walking toward them, these disciples, not on a calm and idyllic lake, but on the back of this raging, chaotic spirit, they are terrified. <laughs> And I'm going to nerd out here with you enough today to tell you that the Greek word that the Bible uses here for, for terrified can also be used to describe a sea that has been churned up and stirred up and agitated, which is to say that the disciples' inner state now perfectly reflects their precarious outer circumstances in this battered up boat. And so it's in this big cosmic and chaotic spirit realm context that Jesus comes walking and in which Peter somehow musters up the guts to say, Jesus, if that's really you, command me to come out to you. And Jesus says, come. 
And Peter takes those few steps out onto the water before fear overwhelms him and he starts to sink only to have the son of the living God reach out a hand to rescue him. Church, I am not an ancient Palestinian. I don't see the world through those same kinds of cosmic spirit world lenses, though I will say that in 15 years of serving the global church, I had the privilege of encountering a lot of people who do actually see the world that way. And I think there's a lot that our Western brains and spiritualities can learn from those folks. But even though my worldview is different, I am here, friends, to testify to the fact today that I do actually believe in the cosmic power of Jesus. I do actually believe that the whole of our creation is held in the hands of a powerful and good and saving God, a God who rides on the back of chaos and fear and is quick to rescue us from ourselves and from our fears as many times as we need rescuing. And I think maybe it's because I believe in the big cosmic nature of God that I feel totally unsurprised when that bigness of God can and does also settle itself over a small outdoor performing arts venue, filling the lungs of concert goers with breasts sufficient to sing along. The wood is tired and the wood is old and we'll make it fine if the weather holds, but if the weather holds, we'll have missed the point. That's where I need to go. As my own voice joins the Indigo Girls and this whole crowd of thousands around me, I think of Peter and of the disciples in that tired old wooden boat. And I imagine all the times that they prayed for the weather to hold so that they might be able to catch enough fish to feed their family and maybe even have enough left over to sell at the market. And I think of all the times that I've done the same, praying that God would keep the proverbial storms at bay so that I'd be spared hardship or grief or suffering or pain. And I remember again with something like gratitude that though I much prefer to swim in calm waters, there really is no way to be fully alive in this world without also experiencing the chaos of that churning sea. If the weather holds, we'll have missed the point. And the point, friends, is to experience all of it. People don't always know what to make of Peter in this story and of his apparent desire to step out into that stormy sea along with Jesus. Is he courageously stepping out in faith? Is he teaching us a lesson about the supposed dangers of doubt? Is he maybe too big for his britches, fueled by like a misplaced ambition to be like God? Who knows? And in some ways, who cares? I can let Peter be Peter, whatever's going on behind the scenes in his heart, because I trust that Jesus is Jesus, the I am the son of the living God, reaching out a hand to rescue me from myself and from my fears. And today, it's that same Jesus who calls to us from across the waters with the same simple word that he said to Peter so long ago, come. If the weather holds, you'll have missed the point. So come, step out onto these chaotic waters, live it all, feel it all, experience it all. Give thanks for the seasons of clarity and peace and joy and calm, but remember that you don't have to be afraid when the inevitable storms begin to arise because you are not and you never will be alone. Jesus is already out there, leading the way, ready to stretch out a hand to rescue you, to hold you fast, whenever those waters threaten to overwhelm you. Now go home and listen to the wood song, friends, because I need some sing-along partners for this music that's been in my head all week long. And may the peace of Jesus accompany you. Amen. Amen.
confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. God of sky and sea, the plants, animals, mountains, and plains proclaim your glory. Inspire people everywhere to learn new ways of living in order that we may better care for your creation. Bring relief to areas recovering from natural disasters, especially those impacted by the wildfires in Maui and the tornadoes and flooding on the East Coast. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace and justice, you call us to live as your beloved community throughout the world. We pray for victims of violence, especially victims of race-based violence. Instill in local, regional, national, global, political, and civic leaders a desire to work for the well-being of all people. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of care and compassion, you bring assurance when we are afraid. Bring calm to any who are anxious or fearful. Bless the work of therapists, nurses, and other health care providers. Comfort all who grieve and soothe any who are sick, especially Al, Bill, Christy, Debbie, Bonnie, and Kristen. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, you accompany, accompany us both jo in both our joys and sorrows. We pray for college students and their families as they begin a new year of learning, friendships, and opportunities. Make your presence known in our work and play and in our quiet rest. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, we give thanks for the lives of Sherry Rachel. Russell, Russell Chorley and all the faithful departed. Be with the Rachel and Chorley families along with families everywhere as they mourn and remember loved ones. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now the peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to share a sign of God's love and peace with one another. I invite you to find your seats. <laughs> Barbie arms. 
So yesterday, I had the privilege of being with 15 of our approximate third graders who spent the morning here at church learning all about communion, what communion means, why we do it. And they're doing that as they prepare. Two weeks from today on Sunday worship, they will share communion with all of us and their families. It was, it was a fun, fun morning. And two of the things we learned is that communion is a very powerful and tactile reminder of God's love and grace for all of us. We also learned that God keeps God's promises throughout all the generations. And we, we talked about going all the way back to Abraham. So God made promises to Abraham, kept those promises through Jesus and through the Last Supper, which we talked about, through our present day. And God will keep those promises to future generations. And this space, this worship space we're in this morning is an absolutely perfect example of that. Several years ago, this property became available and the church discerned and voted to buy this. And at the time, we had absolutely no idea what we were going to use it for. But we thought, you know, we prayed and through the Holy Spirit, we said, yes, we should buy this space and maybe somebody in the future can use it. Well, lo and behold, right after we got it and got the property ready, COVID hit. So we were able to use this space to come together and worship as a community in a safe manner. And since then, look at what we're doing. Every single Sunday morning we're out here, the youth group uses it all the time. This property gets a lot of use. It's a, so thank you all for that. So that is just one perfect example of how the people of grace came together, stretched a little bit through gifts and offerings, and bought this property, which we're able to use now, and future generations will be able to use well into the future. So thank you all for your generosity. At this time, the ushers will come around with baskets. And you're also welcome to give online using the QR code or through our website. Thank you. God of great wonders, we join, you, we join with you in the joy of giving. You give us life and breath. You fill the world with beauty, our hands with bounty, and our hearts with the desire to live generous lives. Accept these gifts and ourselves in your service for the sake of healing in your world. Amen. Friends, this is God's table. It's made ready for those of us who love God and for those of us who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little you who have been here often and you who have not been here before. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who, like all of us, have failed. Come because it's God who invites you. It's God's deepest desire for you to meet Christ here. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Pour out your Holy Spirit in this meal and make us one in this community of faith and with your people throughout the world. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us in whichever language or version is closest to your hearts. There's also a version printed in your bulletin if it's unfamiliar to you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus, whose table was open to all, is present in this bread and cup. Jesus, whose word welcomed friend and stranger, offers friendship through this meal. So come to the table. You are welcome.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. O God, in this holy communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our hearts, to serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and to honor the earth that you have made. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may God, who is present in sunrise and nightfall, and in the crossing of the sea, guide your feet as you go. May God, who is with you when you sit and when you stand, encompass you with love and guide you by the hand. May God, who knows your path and the places where you rest, be with you in your waiting, be your good news for sharing, and lead you in the way that is everlasting. The blessing of the triune God be yours. Amen. God, he is faithful, faithful to us. Through troubled waters, he won't abandon. Fear not, the Lord God is with us. That's the message that we want to send us home with today and uh, keep in mind throughout the, the following days.